Leads, leads, leads. What is happening? Welcome to Working Hours, a show about a place called Leeds, a time called now, and an activity called work. Working Hours wants to record 1,000 loiners over the course of this, the most important decade in the history of the human species, and ask them about what they do all day and hear how they feel about it. My name is Simon, and this is all my fault. My mission here is to try to map out what my city, Leeds, a city that has declared a climate emergency, did during humanity's biggest emergency. On working hours, we hear how loiners have, are, and will be coping with our multiple and expanding crises during their day-to-day -day working hours. Can we turn things around? We'll find out. To tell this story, I need loiners, loiners like you, dear listener. I need people in Leeds or people from Leeds to come on this show and just tell me what they do and let me record how this decade affects us. Please do donate any amount you can to the Working Hours Project through PayPal or consider sustaining Working Hours with a regular £1 a month or more subscription on Patreon.com. Addresses for support are in the outro. This is intended as an expansive and expensive long-term project which I want to make available to anyone and I can only do that with your help. So if you can, please help. Thank you for listening. What did you want to be when you grew up? I should have thought about this one, shouldn't I? I actually wanted to be an actor. Did you? <laughs> yes. Yeah? And how far did you take it? Not very far. <laughs> Was it just like, I'm going to do that and then you never did any acting? I did drama classes and yeah. I did speech lessons and stuff outside of school when mm. I was sort of GCSE time. Mm. And I was going to, I had an interview lined up for Grange Hill. Ooh. Yeah, going way back. <laughs> um, but when I found out you had to buy the whole uniform just to go to the interview, mm. I thought this is a bit dodgy and decided not to bother and then sacked it off. <laughs> mm. So you were pushed out by money straight away. Yeah, well, I didn't. I mean, my parents probably would have gone along with it, but I thought this is ridiculous. Yeah, you know, it's just a bit, bit of a big ask, and really, you could be able to do an interview in any school uniform. Mm. So I was just annoyed. I think <laughs> took I think, it to heart very I much. I think that's a reasonable <laughs> reaction. More actors should be like that. Of like, how much for a headshot? Yeah. Um, and I appreciate a photographer's position on that as well. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> I mean, you obviously didn't study at university or anything. Did that, that kind of kill no. it? No. University, I did graphic design. Mm. Yeah. So you stayed on a creative path. Yeah, yeah. But just went down the lines of, yeah, graphic design, branding, lots of, I mean, it, more computer work than anything else. Mm. Did bits of photography at college. But yeah, just, I think it, I, you just worked out what I was good at. Yeah. You know, successful in that you actually enjoy mm. and then sort of went that way mm -hmm. from that point because I didn't really have any idea what I wanted to do. Mm. Yeah. yeah. I, would, I think it's a really good question because, you know, you have people who do, who have that real kind of, and you, wherever you get that idea from yeah. and then a surprising amount of people who are just like, I still don't know. <laughs> I still this don't even know if I've grown I could up. still do something else. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. You are listening to Series 4, Episode 9, and to my guest, Debbie Jackson. This is a studio-based interview, but the audio is from an H6 backup recording, recorded on the 23rd of March, 2023, at Unity Through Music. Hello. So I'm apologising for the sound again. Please donate to support the show. So this was recorded down at Unity Through Music, just off Meanwood Road. It's a great studio. But unfortunately, mine and Debbie's conversation didn't record. The recording studio laptop locked once we'd started, and I hadn't got the password for it before John, the studio owner, left the studio. Because I'm smart, me. So the recording you are hearing is from my backup recording on the H6. I have done what I can with it, but what do you want from me? This is a free product. I'm only going to put so much work in. With all that out of the way, let's crack on. Debbie Jackson has only been in Leeds for five years and loves it here, mostly because of the people. She says the people of Leeds make the city a brilliant place to live and I'm planning on staying indefinitely. Warning, once you visit, you may never leave. Her magazine, That Leads Mag, shares local stories in print and online, creating trust and loyalty between customers 
and businesses in the North Leeds area with a free door drop advertising magazine. Everything Debbie does for That Leeds Mag comes back to these values, being environmentally conscious, spreading positivity and respect for all. That Leeds Mag is a continuous printed marketing solution for your local Leeds business with customers who are ready to buy your product or service. If you have ever considered leafleting in Meanwood, Chapel Allerton, Headingley or Moortown, then That Leeds Mag is right up your street. Providing credibility your customers can't just scroll past. If you'd like to know more about That Leeds Mag, go to thatleadsmag.co.uk. Follow, listen, share, guest, donate to podcasts you like. And if you don't like this one, what are you doing here? Turn it off. Loiners, please get yourselves on this show and get your colleagues and suppliers on it too. Please join me on Patreon or Ko-fi to provide monthly support or help with a donation. Demonstrate your support for this show on social with likes, follows and shares. If you want to keep listening to interviews such as these, then you will need to do something to help facilitate that because I am all spent up now. Share and recommend working hours wherever and whenever you can. Right, let's do this. Episode 89 of Working Hours with Debbie Jackson. We'll go into what you're doing now then. So what is it that you are doing now? So at the moment, I am running a local magazine called That Leads Mag. Mm-hmm. Great title. Editor and chief. Yeah. <laughs> and, and, you know, chief bottle maker. What is it? Bottle wash. <laughs> Hot wash. <laughs> Tea maker. Yeah. <laughs> Head of yeah. sweeping up. Exactly. Yeah, yeah all of that. <laughs> so... Do you, I, I mean, do you have other people working on the magazine with you? No, just so, me. Just you? Yeah. So, how did you get into that? Redundancy, mostly. Mm. So, I've always been a graphic designer, and then in 2020, I was made redundant from a print company that I was working for, and it's just because of COVID, really. Mm. Um, so, I was at a bit of a loose end, started doing freelance graphic design work. Mm-hmm and advertised in a local magazine called East Leeds Mag, East Mm -hmm. Leeds Magazine. And was getting work through that. Mm -hmm. And he let me know that a magazine called North Leeds Life was going to cease trading Mm -hmm. um, in the September 2020. Mm -hmm. I had a conversation with John and he said, he said it was his only job Mm -hmm. and he was the most chilled out person I'd ever met. I thought, right, okay, this could work. (laughs) And then so I thought, well, I'll, I'll start up another one and you know there was no other magazines delivering in Meanwood Chapel Alton heading me and thought okay it's a great area Mm -hmm. some good people to deliver to um let's start doing that and that's exactly what I did yeah phoned up all the advertisers who were in North Leeds Life and some of them stayed some of them didn't yeah you know because they obviously built up built up a relationship with the guys who were running it Mm -hmm. and then just carried on from there really Mm. went from 16,000 I'm now up to print 20,500 wow. every six weeks. Yeah, that's good growth. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so, and like, so we, we have chatted before. Yes. So, and chatted fairly early on when we were both kind of yeah. starting. Yeah. These, these various projects. <laughs> these crazy things that we decided <laughs> to do. <laughs> so I wanted to kind of bring back, go back to, uh, it'll come back to me. Okay. I think. You so, can edit that bit out. <laughs> yeah, hopefully. I'd like to leave them in as well, though. Okay. It's, it's, uh, it makes it seem like I'm not doing as much editing. It makes it seem like it's a more genuine conversation. Fair enough. I don't, it is well, a that's genuine my conversation. In, that's my intention. I don't know if it works or not. What was, what was it that Where I was going to Am I going with it? Um, I think it was... Yeah, so it was about print. That's, mm-hmm. that's it. So we had this conversation about you know various social media and print mm-hmm. and so on. Why Why did you stick with print? Isn't print dead? No, print is not dead. My background's in print, always mm. done print, designed for print, very mm. technical when it comes to cutter guides and all that kind of stuff, but mm. also, you know, what looks good and, you know, colours and all of that, that's my background, but it, it gives a certain substance and sort of concreteness to what people are doing. Mm. So... And also, when you look at blog posts online, you might click on it, 
you might read the first sentence. Mm. But I mean, I think someone said to me the other day, how many times have you ever read an ebook? Mm. And I was like, mm, I don't think I actually have. Mm. <laughs> Whereas if there's a piece, you know, a booklet or magazine living or you know, kicking around your kitchen, mm. you'll just flick through it. You'll pick yeah. it up. There might be something of interest, you know. And if there is, then you'll pick it up next time. You yeah. Know? So I think it's just way more likely that someone's going to read it yeah. than, you know. And when you're looking for a tradesperson, you can get lost online. You can Google, you know, window cleaner in Leeds. And all of a sudden you're getting from everywhere, not just mm. Leeds. It's whoever's paid for the top spot, you know. Yeah. I think that's frustrating for people. Yeah. Especially when it's a job like someone needs a new roof. If you go online, you might get someone coming from Sheffield. Yeah. Obviously, they've got to take the time to come up and quote for you to do the work. So their their quotes can be higher anyway. Mm -hmm. You think, well, let's find someone who's actually local. Yeah. <laughs> Whereas Google can lie with things like that. Yeah. Because it's whoever pays yeah. the premium. Even if you go under the ads, it's still whoever's clever enough on SEO, not necessarily the best roofer. Yeah. <laughs> or the most local roofer. Yeah. So I think I think it just fits into a gap. It's very much missing in a lot of communities. Is it still largely ringing up advertisers? Is that not so much anymore? No, no. It was initially when I first started. Mm. There was a lot of cold calling, um, emailing, all that kind of stuff. Had you done any of that before? No, never. How never was been that a experience? salesperson. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, I had to beat myself up a little bit to do it. So I you know it needs to be done, and it yeah. has, it does work. It, yeah. It's just. Um, a bit a lot of, yeah <laughs> you get a no you pick up the phone you do it yeah, again yeah. you know and then you get someone you know who, who goes oh yeah I was looking at your magazine the other day or um, and it just sort of picks you up a little bit and yeah you, and you're like oh they say oh yeah I advertise in another magazine and I was looking for another one in that area brilliant but it you know that's one out of 20 phone calls yeah so yeah just have to keep going but all those 20 phone calls as well at the same time you know they're effectively little adverts aren't they yeah. you're putting that name in you're Telling putting the people. seed in someone's head yeah. So. yeah 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 if they take the time to listen <laughs> yeah and if they've heard you there and then six months later they see they that see leads the mag on the table yeah, yeah. so it's and getting established in the way that people see it around yeah people talk about it people talk about the articles in there yeah um I was sitting in Headingley Heart where I live a big stack of magazines and there was this lovely little couple and they had the magazine in front of them and they're showing it to each other, you know. <laughs> oh, it's so sweet. <laughs> That's what it's all about. You can't do, I mean, you can do that with your phone, but it's not the same. No. no. Yeah. So, uh, and there's there are articles in it. It's not oh, just all yeah. adverts. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So how do you go about with the articles? Do you have, like, is it all just you or are you having guest public? Uh, guest writers and things I or... don't have guest writers I am looking for a regular it's a work in progress um, they're generally sort of community interest companies who have got something exciting going on but just need to raise their profile a little bit mm -hmm. um, because I don't just do the editorial in the magazine I do post it on social media as well mm -hmm. but I, you know, the magazine's more powerful than anything else that I do mm. um, and I just I like to give that little bit of support where I can. Um, they're not free. Mm. I do charge the cost price of the page. Yeah. Um, give my time for free. Yeah. You know, so at least it's, you know, kind of good, great for them. Mm. And it gives me something to sort of raise my profile on social media as well. Yeah. And it's also something to feel good about. That yeah. you can. You good know. news stories. Yeah. You know, like the lambs in Meanwood Farm. And yeah, yeah just um, doing one about... Um, a place in Chapel Alton which has a soft play would you believe in Chapel Alton I didn't even know there was one where's that well there you go <laughs> <laughs> you'll have to read the next magazine <laughs> but I think there's lots of like things that are secret and hidden mm. and um, through networking I find out about them mm -hmm. and, and just have like one to one conversations with whoever's running it and see if there's some sort of you know mm. opportunity for me to help them mm. so mm. this is because this is a place that we can yeah yeah, I, yeah. I, I mean you know this is a place i had no idea about We're really unity until recently music yeah in um unity through music yeah in mm -hmm. in meanwood in meanwood mm -hmm. which is a, a a very lovely studio that i've just recently discovered yeah. um through that leads mag through that leads mag <laughs> <laughs> and and linkedin and linkedin yeah um yeah yeah i mean you do a fair bit on linkedin as well i you do, do. Yeah. i mean do you put 
is your process you do the recordings you put those out there as the interview and then you turn those into articles or oh no I don't do many interviews anymore when right. I first started the magazine yeah. and we were in the middle of covid I was doing interviews video interviews on zoom mm -hmm. did some really interesting ones with chef Jono um Lisa Holdsworth some uh, quite a wide variety of people mm -hmm. um they just became too costly for me yeah like they're fantastic and I really enjoyed doing them but when you're doing, you know, you're dedicating a page or two pages in the magazine to it, mm -hmm. that costs me money. <laughs> and when you're then going ahead and editing all the videos, that takes time, mm -hmm. you know, and I think it just became too much. Even um, if you're doing a light touch edit on them, I mean, you still you still time. have to watch the whole thing through yeah. to make sure that it's all yeah. okay. So. Yeah, well, I was doing little 30 second minute clips. Mm. as well for like Instagram reels and mm. and they're on YouTube as well so I was doing all these little edits uh, yeah you can take a day yeah to go through it find the right bits you know the juicy bits that you want to share yeah yeah, yeah. so actually writing it for the magazine wasn't too painful but then it, when it cost, cost money to print and distribute the magazines I've got mm. to cover the cost of those pages mm -hmm. so it didn't quite cover itself <laughs> with mm. the amount of time involved Unfortunately, because I did love doing it. <laughs> <laughs> well, it, it, it's fun, isn't it? It's, mm. it's nice to get to sort of be, mm -hmm. especially when we couldn't be there in person, but to speak to people kind of directly and just, yeah. you know, get things straight from the horse's mouth, as it were. And yeah. yeah. Yeah, let's go a bit into your background before we move into questions. Okay. So, I mean, you said you were, it was a matter of kind of focusing on the skills that you had and, and kind of identifying what, what your strengths were. Um, and I suppose to a degree where your weaknesses were mm. with that because uh, you've got to see picking up the phone yeah, wonder so finds the, the other strangers <laughs> <laughs> so uh, I, I mean what was the well, I suppose one way to ask it is kind of how, how did you develop that skill set but what, what was your kind of background that that made you kind of go this is this is where my strengths do lie this is something that I can do and make a success of well, I mean, it's 10 years working for a direct mail company in Enfield. Mm -hmm. You might be able to tell from my accent if I'm not from Leeds. <laughs> <laughs> and um, so that was lots of artwork. Mm -hmm. And I think I thought there's, I've worked with loads of big brands. I thought, wait a minute, I can, sort of, this is transferable mm -hmm. to, you know, I do all the advertising or do the artwork for the advertisers if they need me to mm -hmm. um, and actually get the point across. But I think I really just enjoyed it when, I do that advert and it generates leads for the customer. Yeah. Because that's, I mean, that's what they want. They want a return on their investment. Yeah. And I just try and streamline what they're trying to say. So yes, this person might want, might do 20 different things, mm. but what's the thing that they want customers for? You know what? Because they might not want all these other little jobs. It's yeah. talking directly to the person that they, you know, is their ideal customer rather than everyone. Mm. You know, you've got to think, for them but designing something that talks per to the person who they want to do business with yeah is is difficult um but yeah, and keeping the adverts quite clean if i've got that if i can help them with that yeah you know some of them don't even have a logo you know talking yeah. really small independent businesses who don't do marketing you know if it's a roofer he he doesn't know anything about his designs and logos and marketing, you know, he's not expected to, he's expected to be good at roofing. Yeah. <laughs> so yeah. I think just like helping people out like that is, is a nice feeling when it works and they get custom from it. I want to talk about layout a little bit. Mm -hmm. um, and I don't know how to sort of go into this. So I'll, 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 I'll start with this question. Like, okay. how, do, how do you approach it? Like, do you have a kind of, do you have like a formulaic layout for the mag now where you're like, this goes here, this goes here, this Roughly, goes here, yeah. yeah. So, and then it's just a matter of kind of filling those spots and... Yeah, exactly. So the smaller ads, the eights, I like to, the little tradesmen, the, you know, painter and decorators and stuff like that, I like to put them at the back, mm -hmm. inside back cover, towards the back of the magazine. Um, editorial generally goes on the left-hand page mm. um, because advertisers prefer right-hand page. Mm -hmm. Um, it's kind I of, guess that's because we're reading left to right, so they're assuming our eyes are drifting think, that way. Yeah, that's what people think. It, it, the Metro did a big study on this, mm. and it, people actually spend longer looking at the left-hand page, mm. but advertisers prefer the right-hand page. 
I don't mind. <laughs> <laughs> Whatever. <laughs> They're paying. <laughs> Whatever. Up to them. Um, but I mean, I, the people who say, you know, I want to write on page, I will explain to them. You'll mm. probably get people looking at your advert for longer if you put mm. it on the left. And some people read the magazine backwards, back to front rather than front to back. Yeah, yeah. You know, so I guess it's just, it's fine. But yeah, the, and then obviously the covers generally a local artist on there and then a little introduction from me and then it's all a bit of a mix. Sometimes people pay for the centre spread, which is nice. Mm -hmm. um, we've done the Chili Shop Awards three years in a row. Mm -hmm. Centre spread, which is mm -hmm. cool. Happy with that. And um, But yeah, that's it really. And back covers, whoever, you know, is booked out for the next few, which is great. <laughs> Let's spend a bit of time on, on, on well, basically on what, what I'm thinking is going mm -hmm. back to you being from Enf coming Essex. from Enfield, from yeah. Essex, up to lovely sunny Yorkshire, mm -hmm. um, and then you're in a particular area, a particular part of Leeds, mm -hmm. working with particular businesses in those parts of Leeds. Yes. This is going to give you a very specific kind of view yeah. of the city and so on. Like, but you've made it I, I mean seemingly just from looking at the magazine from mm -hmm. outside you've made a bunch of really good really interesting connections yeah. with businesses and so on i mean like that relationship with the chili shop yeah like i've seen you <laughs> th those two brands together a lot yeah so um yeah i mean that's got to be part of the joy of the job yeah built uh, yeah i mean it's, it's sort of when you when you talk about networking with people and or doing business, you tend it's it's better to have a business relationship before a friendship. Mm. If you have a friendship and you do business with a friend, it's a lot harder to manage. Yeah. So, but I did quite a lot of network networks network at Leeds Business Forum, and we are in business mm -hmm. um, regularly, and there are lovely little groups like having your own little team. You mm -hmm. know, um, they know my business inside and out, and I know their businesses inside and out. Mm -hmm. um, so it's very easy to refer if you need to. Yeah. Um, you know, if, if if somebody's looking for a particular service, but it works both ways. So it's not just, you know, it's me giving them work and them giving me work because we've built up that no like and trust. Yeah. Thing. Yeah. 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 <laughs> and it works, and that's. But for me, networking because of COVID, I started the business in COVID. I was like, well, right, okay, how the hell do I get out and talk to people when I physically can't get out and talk to people? Mm. So. That was when I started all these Zoom meetings. I did a little training thing on how to network because mm -hmm. I'd never done it before. Mm. Um, and there's lots of little things about making sure you follow up with people that you're interested mm. in speaking to. And, you know, just, you know, as soon as you've lost their name, you can't find them again. So you mm. need to make sure you're making the right notes and getting the right business cards now, but not so much then. Yeah, yeah. And, um, but yeah, that's how I've sort of grown the network mm. on LinkedIn. Mm. So it's very different. Like, I don't, I couldn't say I've had business from any of the socials that I do, but I think it just, it's nice for people to be nosy, mm. to see what I'm doing mm. and the kind of stuff I'm sharing, you know, and build that community that way. I think it does, it does help, you know, mm. it, it's, it's that association, isn't it? And it's, it's your name being seen. I mean, yeah. like the big brands wouldn't spend that much money on it if it wasn't. Yeah. If it didn't do anything, yeah. I mean, I got raw. I got a direct mail from Google. You know, mm. you think when you're getting seeing Google in print, you think, mm. you know, <laughs> everyone should be doing it. <laughs> it obviously works with Google and do it. <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. What, what I want to look at here before we go into questions, like, did you plan to have your own business? No. I mean, you came out of redundancy. Terrifying. Was there anything so? <laughs> Why did you do it? Why, why did you? I, I mean, I know it was from redundancy and there were certain pressures, but yeah. you could have hunted uh, around for all I sorts could. of online I did. jobs. I did hunt around for other jobs. Um, not massively, I'll admit. I mean, I applied for a job at Aldi. Mm. Um, when they wouldn't have me, I thought, oh God, what am I going to do? Right, yeah, yeah. <laughs> and, uh, but this was just an opportunity and I think it was too good to miss because it would just so many elements of it i thought i'd really enjoy that it was like the stars aligned mm, kind of thing yeah and i i mean it it's taken a long time i'd, I'd say it's established now just over mm. two years mm. people know who i am um they've heard of the magazine which mm. is nice mm. um so yeah i think it, it it's hard 
starting a business is hard mm. <laughs> and there are that there is that roller coaster i mean there's been so many days when i've just wanted to go yeah stop this I'm not doing it anymore <laughs> and then you get up the next day and you carry on <laughs> well I, I mean obviously my next question is would you go back to a job could you go back to a I job i think i could mm. i think my my whole you know my work life balance is quite nice at the moment like mm. you can take it quite slowly if you're not feeling it that day mm. just don't work you mm. know and it and then there's other mornings where you smash out an insane amount of stuff and mm. think oh my god I've done all of that and it's only 10:30 <laughs> 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 it's whereas if you have to physically go to an office and sign in and you know do that for a period of time there'll be I remember days when you're sitting at your desk thinking I've got so much work to do and you don't feel like doing any of it yeah, and you don't do any of it yeah. yeah you just have to find the balance between you know I, there's nobody telling me what to do mm. so but I know that the work but how needs to do be I done. do anything yeah. yeah I know that it needs to be done but so yeah it, you can you can manage your own well-being and your mm. own time and I think that's lovely. I mean, I have to get up early because I've got a 12-year-old and take her to the bus stop in the morning, so mm. I'm up anyway, you yeah. know, and I'm more productive in the morning than I am in the afternoons. Well, that's always a key thing as well, isn't it? Identifying when you're most productive, yeah. like, are you a morning person or afternoon person? Or, yeah. Uh, and a lot of businesses now will let people manage their own time to a certain degree, mm. I think, um, but that's more kind of an after COVID mm. than, a, than when I was in you know, middle of COVID. <laughs> mm. Mm. Yeah, I was stressing. Yeah. Well, let's let's do COVID. Before I start on that, let's I'm do just COVID. Gonna... No thanks. <laughs> <laughs> I've done COVID t- three <laughs> times at least. I don't want to do COVID again. <laughs> Should we let him to give us the password? I hope that's still recording, and I hope this is recording us. Okay, I'll check. <laughs> you can take. Uh, well, I'm, I'm recording. I'm recording that on the back So okay. we should have something. Yeah, <laughs> do it all again. <laughs> it wouldn't be the first time. Oh. Um, I think um, Hazel's had that before. <laughs> yeah. You feel like you're repeating yourself. <laughs> well, it, it, on the ones that I've re-recorded, um, so the first one I did, we were pretending that it was the first recording kind of thing, yeah. so we were kind of going through as if we hadn't yeah. asked any of these questions or anything before. I think it's better just to be honest. <laughs> to be like, we're doing this again because it went wrong. Um, so, yeah, so let's... Uh, the COVID question. So mm. we've talked a bit about, obviously, you being in lockdown and we kind of started touching on, on sort of changes from lockdown. Obviously, a big change for you work-wise, an entire yeah, yeah. new industry and an entire new business. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I mean, was it an ideal situation in a way that you were learning within... You know, learning a new business, starting mm. a new business, learning how you worked and like to work and like mm-hmm. to work that. In that circumstance, like, was there any freedom that came out of that? Like, were there benefits to you, do you think? Or was benefits. it all just hassle? Oh. Because <laughs> <laughs> um. it seems to me like, potentially, that was an opportunity because you weren't going anywhere, couldn't go anywhere. Mm-hmm. You could, you know... But then at the same time, it's a way to dedicate the time that you did have into something that was interesting and worthwhile for you. I learned absolutely loads. Yeah. And I speak to lots of sort of sales advisors on how to sell, you know. There's loads and loads of different techniques. Mm. And there's loads on the psychology of marketing. And I absorb and take tips and tricks from that kind of thing. But the... I guess there's the imposter syndrome, which I don't I don't think I'd label it that, but I think it just felt like, you know, picking up the phone and cold calling people mm. feels a bit like I'm just intruding into your lives mm. and, you know, speak to me. But when, like I said before, when you find somebody who's interested in what you're saying, mm. it's, it's quite cool. I think COVID, I was speaking to people who were just bored. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> that tradesmen could pretty much work all the way through COVID, especially mm. if they were working outside of people's houses. Mm. And the builders and everybody was at home, so no one was going on holiday. Mm. They were spending money on tradesmen. Mm. So for me, it was a bit difficult because the tradesmen were busy. <laughs> yeah. Didn't, didn't need to advertise. Yeah, don't um, have a marketing person that you can speak to. <laughs> no, certainly, certainly didn't. Well, the bigger firms do. Yeah. Um, but 
I still do freelance graphic design, mm. still for the printer that made me redundant. So mm. they did have a need. Um, I freelance for a couple of other printers as well. Um, I do other work for advertisers. Mm. Um, if they need something more, you know, flyers or whatever, um, other bits and pieces. So, yeah, just very, very busy. <laughs> so is that, um, I'm guessing that's not for, you know, you're not necessarily just doing favours and kind of keeping your hand in with that? No, not favours, definitely yeah. not. <laughs> Do you feel confident, like, does the magazine sort of confidently supply something that, that that's solid and then you kind of bulk up with these additional sort of pieces of yeah, work, is that? Yeah, yeah. I mean, I, I don't want to put out a magazine that's just adverts. Mm. So it's really nice to find decent bits of editorial. Mm. Um, for me, I suppose, having only moved to Leeds four and a half years ago, mm. a lot of the stuff that I'm discovering, I share. Because even, you know, someone's just moved to Leeds, mm. it's fantastic piece, you know, for them to have the magazine and find mm. out about these things. Or if even if someone's lived in Leeds their whole life, they might not know about some of the stuff that I'm sharing. Yeah. Um, or they might know about them, just haven't had an update for like five, six years or whatever. Don't yeah. follow them on social media, haven't got a clue. Yeah. Um, and it's it's just, I think, you know, I have people going, oh, I'd never heard of that, you know, and I think that's just really nice that I can open their eyes to someone else in the community that's doing something amazing. Yeah. yeah. Like the surplus supermarket in Hare Hills. So uh, so Yorkshire's biggest surplus supermarket. Mm. They deliver my magazines with their deliveries now, which is oh. brilliant. So that's an extra <laughs> five hundred. Yeah, gone. Um, but yeah, I've got a great relationship with Adam. Um, but yeah, I don't know if you've ever been there. No, no. But that's it. People people haven't heard of it. It's like well, you can go and get a massive tray of food for twelve quid. Why would you not? Yeah, and there's <laughs> and a save well, it from the landfill. There's a lot of competing attention, isn't there? So. Mm. Um, and I think a lot of the time, you know, our eyes are drawn away to things that have more money, you know, things mm. that are national, international and so on, that the local kind of gets pushed to one side. Yeah. Or the people that are into the local kind of stuff, are, you know, it's, it's like a small community of people who are into the local kind of yeah. stuff. And normally that's in their location. I think it's growing. I it think it's growing. growing. It is growing. Yeah. Um, I mean, when you think about you order something from Amazon, they've still got to send you a, a you know, if, if you're one of these people who orders from Amazon regularly... Like, just order once a week. Don't order one thing every day because you know it will come tomorrow anyway. Mm. Like, just save the planet a little bit. <laughs> yeah. Put it in your put it in your basket and order it all at once. <laughs> you know, it's not yeah, exactly. simple. It's not so that. simple. Or buy locally. Yeah. <laughs> or yeah. even go to Argos. Yeah. 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 So, Lots of things like that. I'm very eco conscious. Well, that's good. Yeah, because you're um, carbon certified as well. Like yes, you know, and neutral. you've provided me with two guests. You sent good. at least yeah. So the Phil and uh, my carbon. Yeah, I, Toby. I we're on my radar because of you. Yeah. Um, he carbon neutral my magazine. Yep. Yeah. yeah. And I was very impressed with that. I was like, I'm very proud of you for doing it. As Thank well. you. Um, <laughs> yes, so people, yeah, well people go, that. oh, you're using so much paper. I'm like, okay, but the paper's beyond carbon neutral. Mm. Like, I offset all my greenhouse gas emissions. I can't do anymore. <laughs> yeah. Do we want to look, uh, is there anything that you want to kind of bring out of COVID that we've not, not touched on? I mean, obviously, like one of the things that we, we have, said and obviously because mm. I'm still talking about it but um you know it is something that's still not gone away yeah well people loads of people have had it recently mm. yeah mm. it's still floating around but even if you've got it now I mean everybody just goes out and lives their lives mm. I guess we've all been vaccinated so mm. yeah I don't I think some businesses did amazing out of it mm. some businesses started because of it but then finished because of it you know mm. it's it was it was needed for a period of time and then went away. Mm. Um, the need wasn't there anymore. Like even a lot of the Zoom networking, I mean that still goes on. Mm. But whenever I meet people in real life networking, mostly they're sick of Zoom networking. Yeah, <laughs> I'd rather yeah. actually meet people because yeah. that's how you get to know them. Mm. You know, on Zoom, you got this little head in a box. Well, then it's the it's yeah it's it's the kind of it. it the unprescripted, it's the, mm. the natural and the spontaneous, that's what you want. You want the things outside yeah. the of... body language that you, yeah. don't, you don't see. You want you want the formula there to provide a format for things and then mm. people can go out of it and then yeah. say it was either good or rubbish, you know. <laughs> and then bond. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> 
Okay, so yeah, I think naturally it'd be good to go to climate change from there. Okay. So obviously you're carbon neutral. Yes, I think I'm just, um, I'm terrified because you see, people think the world is massive. Mm. It's not. Mm. <laughs> like we're just a big ball of rock flowing, you know, not floating, but you know, I think we're, the world is not that big. Mm. So things that we do in this country or things that we do across Europe affect the whole world. Because it's, I think when you sort of, in your mind, when you think, hang on, the world's actually very small, mm. then you start to realise, you know, what changes we need to make now. This is scary. I guess this is, this, the craftivists who are in Leeds City Centre, they um, started to try and deal with the, the fact that everyone's a bit scared mm. um, by doing it in a crafty way mm. <laughs> and writing to, you know, they did this big... Um, blanket that they sent to Rishi Sunak and like but they were trying to get people to mindfully actually do something mm -hmm. and feel like they couldn't just stay at home and be scared about what was happening mm. you know just I think yeah I, I well I did actually meet someone a few months ago who said that climate change was rubbish and not real and I, I didn't even know what to say to the guy mm. I was like have you got any kids He's like, yeah, grandkids. I'm like, how can you, how can you still deny this? Mm. But yeah, it's quite passionate. And I think I make, slowly making more and more changes every year, you know, and you sort of, little things, the refill shops and, you know, the seagulls for your paint and just, I, I very rarely buy any new clothes, mm -hmm. <laughs> like, like underwear and socks. Mm. It's kind of it. Mm. Um, everything from charity shops, mm. you know, and I think you just, I don't want to add to the problem. <laughs> Mm. So and uh, yeah, I feel passionate about like there's various clothes shops and stuff out there which aren't doing as much as they could mm. um, just for the sake of a cheap outfit for one night, and it makes me mad. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I think you know I can the I can uh, but the more I think about it, the more it's like this is going to affect me so like mentally. So I, I can just do as much as I can possibly do um, and express my opinions to other people, but only obviously when they feel like <laughs> you're in the situation where you can. Mm. Um, if you, um, But I don't want it to, to affect my mental health. Yeah. So you kind of, yeah. Well, I think that's a key point. I mean, the, the thing is, if you, the best way to be empowered is to be active, mm. is to be doing something. Yeah. Um, and it's that, it's when you have have that feeling or, or you have that inability to do anything about it that mm. you feel most powerless. Yeah. Um, so, I, I, I mean, it sounds like it was, was that the plan then to have that carbon neutral certification always, sort of all along? Always, yeah. I didn't want to make, I didn't want to have an effect, any, make anything any worse than it already was. Yeah. <laughs> and even the editorial, wherever possible, like craftivists, like my carbon stuff, you know, like the surplus supermarket, mm. um, you know, library of things mm. um, in Headingley. Mm. Um, and just those kind of things, I, if, how much, ever much I can help. Mm. It's fantastic editorial for me, totally fits with my values. Mm. It's just like, you know, anything like that. <laughs> just, I mean, for anyone, you know, I think you should just make a list of five things um, and, you know, do them. Go, I've got the whole year. By the end of the year, this is these are the five ways I would have changed my daily life, you know. Mm. Um, and don't don't get overwhelmed. Just make a you know, think of little tiny things mm. that you can do, mm. um, and everybody can do them. Mm. You know, if you're using plastic bags for your lunch, don't just use a paper bag. Mm. <laughs> it's really that simple. Mm. Um, and if that's one of your five things, you know, you're nearly there. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And that's. Yeah, all I can suggest is don't don't think, oh, I've got to do everything now, just slowly. Mm. <laughs> I mean, think about, you know, what's it called? Where they're going to, by 2030 or by 2050, the whole world will have done all these things. Like, okay, well, they've given themselves 25 years mm. to make these changes. <clears throat> you yeah, give yourself some time. <laughs> yeah, you yeah. Know. And also, you and know. feel good about it. <laughs> yeah, and also it shouldn't just be a matter of, uh, like, you know, it is a matter of personal change and we all have mm. to make changes, but it's also, that means 
institutions, organisations and people in power also have to make change and shouldn't yeah. be let off the hook by yeah. us all changing our <laughs> light bulbs. Um, oh, yeah, so, LED. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, yeah, LED. It costs a bit at the beginning, but overall it will cost you less. Yeah. <laughs> but the, the, I, I mean, it, uh, more and more, they are kind of straightforward technical solution you know mm. it's not like it's some big super tech fix it's just like efficiencies yeah. improved massively mm-hmm. and then and all these other sort of indicators yeah what else on climate change work wise so i did uh, consider like putting one tip in every magazine mm. you know? um but i wonder if that every six weeks making a change was too much maybe every other magazine i just put a change this to that you know easy <laughs> Yeah. Refill your shampoo bottles instead of buying new plastic every single time. Mm. Yeah, mm. That's, it. that's three times a year. That's three less. Depending on how much shampoo you use, um, three less plastic bottles in the in the world. Mm. If everybody but, did that, that's massive. But then you've got you've got to get them to do it, and then make them go and tell everyone, and make them to do it. <laughs> well, don't make anybody do it. <laughs> but just suggest it. You know that little. Oh yeah, I could do that. That's easy. Yeah, you know. Well, I do think it's going to be. You know, like the, the change is going to be peer pressure led. It's, it's mm. you know, it doesn't come from necessarily the bottom or the top. It comes from the people yeah. that decide. You know, or where or who who can afford to push that media into your face mm. as much. But the, the <laughs> yeah, or when that media has no you know institutional support to keep it going, or yeah. or power or energy. Yeah, I mean that that's obviously part of your design mm-hmm. and you're promoting it yeah I local think local local <laughs> yeah, green yeah. green green yeah <laughs> um i don't think i don't see what more you could do no. really in your position so i can just try and influence in a good way that's was what's going on in leeds part of the appeal of moving to leeds like were you aware of any of this no were you aware that i didn't leeds know anything declared about a leeds, climate really. emergency or no. anything <laughs> i didn't know anything about leeds <laughs> So, I visited like a few times and yeah. Went so it must have been quite me. a. I mean, it must have been quite nice to find that kind of stuff out. Like, I mean, yeah, it's been great it for me great. to kind of discover how much we are doing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Leeds um, is t- I think the out of all the cities in the UK, it's number three for tree city happening. of the world. I discovered well, I don't today. Don't know about that. Maybe yeah. once they've planted all these. Millions. Well, no, it's a wooden ward. We've won. Oh, is it? Yeah, we're yeah. the tree city of the world. Okay. Um, well, city so, of, Le- of England, probably not the worst. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> I think, it, but we are doing a lot of tree planting as yeah. well. We are doing a lot of tree cutting yeah. down as well, which is very, Well, the very conversation annoying. that I had with um, my carbon is that, yeah, they, a lot of places they'll say, yeah, we planted these trees, but you don't know if in 10 years' time that tree's been eaten by something or yeah. if it's been blown over. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, saying I plant a tree. Yeah doesn't mean anything really you've yeah. got those trees have got to live to a certain height before they really make any difference mm-hmm. <laughs> so, mm-hmm. yeah they wish they could grow faster that's all <laughs> 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 but then with climate change enough sunlight you know enough enough rain <laughs> but who knows yeah well we don't mm-hmm. we don't know what yeah. <laughs> um okay so let's let's do social media oh, yeah. um Bane of our existence. don't worry brexit's next uh, <laughs> I don't know anything about Brexit, so we can skip that one. <laughs> so, yeah, I yep. mean, you have to do social media I, for your work, well, even I, though your work is media, and in a way, it's very social media. It's very social. <laughs> it's very social. But uh, what we call social media, mm. like, uh, is it bane of your life, or is it a great asset to expanding your brand? And your message? There was a pressure when you start a business mm. um, because you've got no money but you've got time mm. and social media is a great way of marketing your business when you've got no money. Mm. <laughs> um, I think, so initially I used it a lot more salesy. Mm. I mean, I did put out the editorial, um, but I was a little bit more salesy on there. I'm a lot less salesy. Like I'll tell people my deadline. Mm. Um, maybe I'll tell people my pricing um, once or twice a year. Yeah. Um, really it's just the editorial and it's, using it as a social platform, mm. not as a selling platform. Mm. Um, when I look at my Google Analytics, six or seven percent comes from social media, mm. which is tiny. Mm. And actually 
probably every magazine takes me two days to plan and post, like schedule yeah. all the socials for those six weeks. Yeah. So it takes time, but a lot of the the CICs and the editorial content comes from connections on social media. Mm-hmm. Um, and people who see my posts may like it or not like it or comment or not comment. Them seeing it still means that they're aware of what I'm trying to do. Mm-hmm. So... Yeah, I've just it, it it's brand awareness and sharing the community content again on another platform. There were people on Instagram who didn't realise it was a printed magazine, mm. you know, because they've never seen it. Or yeah. maybe they live in Beeston or something that's never made it that far. Yeah. But I've had QR codes sta- scanned in Holland. You know? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so it does it it's surprising how far it reaches. Mm. Um but yeah, I think it's I I wasn't gonna do Twitter. My husband was like, you've got to do Twitter. I was like, do I? Do I? Yeah, do I? Um, so, I, yeah, and Facebook was very much a slow burner. Mm. Um, it's still not, you know, great. Mm. <laughs> but it's the same content that goes across the different platforms. You think if someone's following me on Instagram, you might as well not bother following me on Facebook. It's mm. the same content mm. everywhere. But it would be different people following yeah. as well. Yeah. I, I mean, it'll be the same people following as well, but there yeah, will be people the, who My are supporters distinct, yeah. will follow everywhere, yeah. you know. Um, but I think it's just, it's, I'd say with Facebook, don't give up. <laughs> like mm. if you've started posting, but with if you're starting a business and you're trying to market on Facebook, mm. you need to post in all the local groups. Mm. Um, and I did that initially and it did help like grow a better following. But I think, I, I don't know. Everyone raves about you've got to have a big following, but really, even if you've got a small following, as long as they're the right people, mm. it doesn't matter who they are. Mm. You mm. might have two thousand followers, but they're not your customers. <laughs> well, it's like that. Have you heard the Have you heard the expression "whale"? No. So, um, so like in in these small payment communities and stuff, mm. they're all looking for a whale. So, like a big spender that basically um, covers everything. So, not so, a dog. Yeah, some some <laughs> nutter who's going to pay. Thousands and thousands of pounds for these small items and right. stuff, and basically keep the rest of the ecosystem of like right. the small payments going. What I was going to ask was, <laughs> do you, I mean, you obviously think it's important. You spend some time on it. You've mm-hmm. like time to it. Yeah. Is it just? Is it kind of box ticking exercise for you? It's fun. Yeah. <laughs> it's fun I think everybody you get these endorphins don't you and it's and it's a research as well mm. because I'm I scroll through I have my favorite two of my advertisers who I like and comment on all their stuff mm. and share my stories and whatever but I think yeah it is fun and it's a good way to for me to discover the people who maybe need a bit more marketing help from the magazine mm-hmm. so especially especially the you know the smaller CICs and stuff and mm. all they've got is social media because they've got time but no money yeah um, so and I find that the, those people if they've got a need or if they're doing something absolutely amazing mm. how can I help them promote that mm. you know um, but it's a good way for me to find them yeah <laughs> yeah but, but the problem is the problem I have as well with social media is that my magazine is you know it takes nearly two weeks to produce the magazines mm. And then nearly two weeks to deliver them. Yeah. So I'm everything I'm thinking about is something that's happening nearly two months in advance. Yeah. Social media stuff that's happening next week. Mm. <laughs> Always like they're reminding you. Oh, we've got this event on on Saturday. Well, I've already planned like two months ago what I'm doing on that <laughs> Saturday. <laughs> so I think I'm working so far in advance. Mm. Yeah, I think. The immediacy of it, you know, that it's now, 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 now is quite hard for me to understand where I'm working on a very different time scale. Very calm, relaxed time scale. Yeah. <laughs> I, 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 I mean, this is a bit of a, a detour, but mm. the sort of, and I'm, I'm sure I've mentioned this before on the podcast, but mm. that sort of thing, you you know, you go into a cafe somewhere and they've got the, you know, the, like the leaflet mm. rack or whatever. Yeah. And then you, you pick up, like, oh, this this is, looks like a really interesting... Pl- oh, it was three weeks ago. Yeah. And, it, you know, you always find the flyers uh, yeah, way after flyers. the events. Yeah. And 
one of the things that I wanted to do on here was to have kind of like local notices and stuff and sort mm. of like, you know, things that are, are coming up. Like that was one of the yeah. ideas. I build it up and maybe... Because, again, this is something that maybe you can speak to, but the, the kind of death of uh, local media, local newspapers mm. and, and the consolidation within the industry, the effects of the collapse of yeah. print and so on. Um, like, I, is that... It seems like that's your niche as well, you know, like mm. filling in that the gap. That gap. Like, well, I mean, part of my marketing, and I say to people, is um, people see the magazine, even if, like, it doesn't matter what social media somebody uses, doesn't matter what platform, mm. they get the magazine. Mm. <laughs> mm. If they're on Facebook but not on Twitter, it doesn't matter, they get mm. the magazine, mm. you know. And I think the whole credibility that you can't scroll past one of my phrases. <laughs> um, I think I just it, yeah. I mean, it fills in the gaps. But I know loads of people who you have a conversation with them. They say, "I don't use social media." Mm. I mean, I don't, business pe- businesses that I speak to when they become an advertiser, I say, "Send me your links to your socials. I'll put you in my favorites and everything. Mm. Uh, make sure I'm you know engaging." And they'll go, "I don't use social media." <laughs> And they're not just old people. Mm-hmm. You know? I mean, the younger, the, the general age group demographic, but the people who read my magazine is 35 to 45, mm. which is shocking because most people think, oh, it's only you know, OAPs who read your mm. magazine, and that is not, <laughs> not the truth <laughs> at all. So I think this, they're all on Facebook. <laughs> they're all trolling on Facebook. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> When's Facebook going to die? Twitter's on its way out, if you believe the rumours. Well, you know, um, we'll, we'll see what happens on that we front. Will. I mean, the thing, is, uh, like, for me, uh, um, I quite liked that the last... Oh, no, I haven't put that episode out yet. But yeah, the episode that I was going to put out, um, we were we did touch on AI in there. And, uh, yeah. and it's like, you know, regulators are going, oh, we'll, we'll regulate this social media newfangled stuff. It's like, it's pretty much oh, dead now and we're on to like <laughs> you should be on you, you should be talking about regulating ai not regulating social oh, media yeah. <laughs> oh. yeah it just the problem is anyone can put anything on facebook and use it and you know put enough money behind it mm. everyone can see it mm. you know and i think if you want to tell lies you mm. can okay so social media i think we've covered yeah bane of my life but yeah. But, but you enjoy yeah, it as well. You yeah, get you, yeah. and it's, it, the posting is painful, but the engaging is fun. But it seems to eighty be, twenty and all that. <laughs> <laughs> it kind of seems to fit what I was saying before, like for you that it's not it, that it's work media. You mm. know, it's um, part of my job. Yeah, uh, I do it. Yeah. And it and it definitely facilitates a lot of stuff that you potentially wouldn't mm-hmm. be able to do or do as easily. Yeah. Well, I think I mean it speaks volumes that. I've never printed anything about you in the magazine, mm. and yet you, because I, I mean, I like your posts on LinkedIn mm. and stuff like that, and it, obviously that's got you to interviews. So, mm. you know, it must be working somehow. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And the people who I'm, who I'm, you know, I'm in my network are seeing what you're doing, mm. just through you know me sticking the odd like on there. So yeah, it, it obviously does some. Yeah, it does. people do see it. Yeah, <laughs> it just takes you know one in a million to engage with it. Yeah, well, I think is where you. I mean, I, I think of things like three three M, for example. Mm. Right, you you you'll notice three M around places. Yeah. You might see it on a post-it note or a mm. scotch tape or whatever. But it might take you a while to go find Minnesota Mining and Minerals and find out their history yeah. and who they are you and how big that. they are and yeah. <laughs> but but. But that's how the brands kind of work, though, isn't it? It's mm. like you, you, you notice them around, and it's like, I've seen that three or four times now. What is that? Yeah. And then you start to kind of peel back. Like duct tape. <laughs> <laughs> done climate change. So Brexit. Done climate, done social media. <laughs> We're skipping Brexit. <laughs> <laughs> well, the Brexit question, you know how that goes. No. It's... Um, I, I mean, yeah. I'm waiting for the first person to say that they've had a Brexit benefit. Uh, have you had no. any any change to your work at all from Brexit? No, no. I've had one adverti- one advertising order. inquiry from a firm based in London who are looking for people who want to export to America mm. from Yorkshire. Mm. So they found me online. Um, if you Google Leeds Magazine, they'll come up. 
Mm. Um, but yeah, they were looking. F- so they might be an advertiser with me. They're currently a warm lead. Mm-hmm. Um, so that would be interesting. So yes, there's that. That mm-hmm. might happen. And that's mm-hmm. obviously based on exports mm. are going to be easier. And the opportunities there to export to America more than it ever was before. Mm. So that is the only way <laughs> changed. You know? And possibly the European Union removing, obviously, at the end of March. So that's already gone. The grant funding. Right. Which you may know something about. Mm. Um, yeah. That's been pulled. But yeah. leads the council will come up with a different grant funding scheme for small business, I'm sure. Mm. Mm. Yeah. Yeah. Or yeah. whether they'll be able to afford as much. It's a whole different question. Mm. Will um, it be? Who knows? We'll find out soon, I'm sure. <laughs> I, I talk about it because people just do it sporadically and occasionally and it's, it's very set and they're not really, you know, it, the conversation is always about people just sticking to their party line generally. And, mm. um, yeah, so it, it's kind of presented as, has to be presented as there's no downside in the media kind of thing, in certain media. And it's then in other neutral. media, it's all very downside. Yeah, it depends on your job. Yeah. If you were, before, if you were exporting stuff to somewhere in Europe, it's probably causing you a massive problem. Yeah. But it's totally off my radar. Mm. Like, it doesn't affect... I mean, it may affect some of my advertisers. Maybe, uh, maybe importing wood or something has become mm. more difficult. But it's not. I haven't gone into that much deep conversation with them about it. Really, no. their suppliers. It's their problem. Yeah. Well, it's a, a again. You know, another reason to talk about it is mm. it can be a touchy subject for people. Still, and it's mm. just like we're going to have to talk about it. But we're not going to be. We're not going to get to shut up about no. it. <laughs> You're obviously passionate about Brexit in one way or another or you wouldn't have it as a question <laughs> well I mean just they, flipping this around now <laughs> I, I mean the fact that they let it drop off the radar for a start and the thing mm. is they're like well that whole idea of getting Brexit done it's like it will mm. never be done it will never be done <laughs> ever no. okay so mm. I'll start with the change question we're going quite fast but okay. that's all right and I, I mean the Ukraine war had a, I think had a massive difference to my business because paper prices probably affected you more than paper Brexit prices nearly of, doubled. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Since I started the magazine, paper prices nearly doubled, mm. which caused problems. Well, it didn't cause problems; it just meant I had to manage my advertisers' expectations and a lot of discussions about. I'm sorry, I'm going to have my pricing up. Mm. You know, um, but I didn't lose any of them. They obviously I'm doing an all right job. It's obviously worth the money. Yeah. <laughs> so yeah. It's good quality paper. My ink don't stink. Another one of my phrases because (laughs) it's not really the ink that smells, it's the paper. So Mm. when you get magazines through your door or wherever, if people go, I love the smell of print Mm. and that smell is chemicals. Mm. (laughs) (laughs) Most printers now use vegetable like based inks. So that's generally not a problem, but but a lot of chemicals in paper. Mm. So, you know, pick up that Leeds mag, give it a sniff, and um, <laughs> it doesn't smell. <laughs> and it was, it's well, just, a, you know, one of the senses you don't get from your phone. From your perspective, what are the kind of three things that you would change if you could change anything about your work? Well, I get sent a lot of press releases, mm-hmm. um, a lot of expectation from people that think I'm, I will publish whatever they write for free. Mm-hmm. So I would remove that expectation. <laughs> um, there's various um, other magazines, newspapers slash magazines, who will publish things for free because mm-hmm. they're crying out for content. Mm-hmm. Um, but my magazine, with it being free to consumer, mm-hmm. um, can't afford to publish everything mm-hmm. <laughs> for everybody. <laughs> um, I'm working on... A sort of a digital solution so I can put out this PR mm-hmm. because a lot of the stuff I receive is really good yeah um, someone's obviously worked hard to produce this and I think I'd love to be able to share it in some way yeah instead of just you know just going replying. back to going, no yeah, sorry I'm sorry <laughs> um, so I'm trying to think of a way to do that um, so if that was already in place that'd be a nice way to change my business mm. Um so yeah, the expectation. 
I mean, and people, when a lot of the networking, oh, you, oh, you do this magazine, I'll send you my press release. Mm. <laughs> and I'll ignore it. <laughs> 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 so, I don't know. I just, yeah, I guess if people do research into the magazine and look at the editorial content, they'll think actually what I'm doing is not appropriate. Mm. But, but yeah, I'd love more people to know about the magazine. Mm. That'd be nice. Mm. And yeah, I don't know really. Do you do media outside of, um, I mean, obviously you're doing this, but I wouldn't, mm-hmm. I wouldn't call this media. No, I don't. <laughs> <laughs> I don't really. No, this is, like I said to you before, this is my second ever podcast. Mm. So I've done Light on Leeds and this one, oh, and, and the Welcome to Leeds bit mm. introduction. Maybe I should write my own PR and mm. send it to other businesses. <laughs> I'd say, can you just put this in your newsletter for me? <laughs> send it to Argos and see if they'll put it in, my, in the catalogue. <laughs> <It's madness. laughs> okay that's one turn I, I, I've got a question that I'll ask you later but I'm going to let you finish on this if you've got no other things that was it no fine. you're fine yeah. <laughs> like you say difficult question so the, that that one change. I mean because you are you're in business for yourself you're mm-hmm. pretty much aligned in what you're doing with, with your values and yeah. so on like it sounds like and you, you, you've said as much mm-hmm. that the work life balance is kind of there it's pretty good um I what what are the downsides? Like, would would it be great to have someone to work closely with? Are you doing the majority of this on your own still? But then you are interacting with a lot of your clients and so on, so you get. Yeah. So when I do find editorial that what I want to write, a lot of the time they write it themselves, or mm-hmm. they give me some key points and we have a conversation and I write mm-hmm. it. But I quite enjoy that. I enjoy getting to know. I mean, I can't. I won't go to market with something that I don't know anything about. Mm-hmm. <laughs> but. Yeah. Mm. Generally, work-life balance is good. Um, yeah, I think it sort of all ticks over quite nicely. Mm. I get random free trials sent to me for things. Slightly better than publishing like PR. <laughs> Just like. Um, oh, what's 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 yeah. a good example of one or your favourite <sighs> one or the weirdest oh, not, one or whatever? <laughs> I'm not an influencer. <laughs> <laughs> I get yeah, I get like I did a a free trial for a fitness thing okay and there's, there's a couple of those I've been offered I've did one I'm not mm. massively into my fitness um, they're just like fun things mm. people invite me to stuff all the time <laughs> I have to cherry pick yeah you know uh, what, what I want what I want to do yeah or what's good for the business and you think oh it's work I've got to do it <laughs> sometimes that's a mental challenge yeah, you're like you can't just not do it you know, just because it's hard. <laughs> you don't want to. It's work, Debbie. Even as much as you enjoy most of it, there are some elements of it where you're like, it's work. You need to do it. <laughs> yeah. Well, you can't enjoy everything, can you? Yeah. Otherwise, that's that's yeah, not yeah. really work. That's is not it? fun. Well, so it would be fun. That would be great. I bet there's people out there who enjoy everything they do all the time. Well, they're not really working. <laughs> <laughs> I think hating some of it's no, essential. That's part of it. <laughs> yeah, we're supposed to be talking about work. <laughs> <laughs> well, one of the things that I talked about early on, mm-hmm. I mean, it, you know, it is about definitions of work and how, how we define work. And I don't really go into that that much mm. because it's such an impossible question. Um, what we what we want is someone to come on who hates their job <laughs> and not necessarily name who they work for proper bad mouth them <laughs> and then I think that'd do well on social media this, this is what I was expecting you see I thought like you know everyone's annoyed you know mm. I'd work in workplaces and there was plenty of people moaning and bitching and whatever oh, God. I mean you know some of that's just part of the British mm. work ethic <laughs> <laughs> not that I'm supporting this trust yeah. or any of those people saying we're all lazy but we yeah. do like to moan in, in oh, work yeah. in a lot of workplaces um, yeah. so I expected a lot more negativity I was mm. really surprised when everyone was just like no I really enjoy working I okay. you know I, I, I want to do it I would I rather like, like not work and, and you know live on a somewhere in Thailand or something you know? <laughs> <laughs> I'd probably get bored after a while I don't know. Yeah, but you'd end up doing it. Well, it wouldn't be getting bored. You'd get involved in stuff. Yeah. I'd have to come back because Leeds is the greatest city in the world. Exactly. <laughs> as we've said. Uh, <laughs> so, um, let's do you, BI. 
So if there was a universal basic income, mm -hmm. would that change anything for you? How would it change things for you? It wouldn't How? change anything, really. I mean, it would, it would potentially, you might not take on some of the other work, maybe. Yeah, maybe pay myself a bit more. Mm. Don't know, really. Or maybe not have to put as many hours in. I mean, it sounds like you put in the hours that you want to put in. Yeah, yeah. yeah. There's a, the, yeah. I just, I, I just get on with it. Mm. There's a certain pattern to the work that I do. So it's sort of this every six week rotation. Mm -hmm. um, got a bit of time this week. Cause next week's deadline week. Mm. Um, so next week will be like flat out mm. just to get it done. And then after it's gone to print, that's when the social media. So there's a certain mm. pattern to it. Mm. But I, I, it took me a while to figure out what that pattern is. Mm. And then you, there's different seasons with different advertisers. So you, you know, you get the schools with their open days in September, October, and you get the Have sports clubs. Have you got a wall planner? Nope. No. Is it all, uh, all just I've got a big diary. And, yeah, yeah. Google calendar. Yeah. <laughs> with everything. Yeah, lots of different Google calendars for different <laughs> things. Switch them on and off. Yeah, so I know. Yeah, you have to check 10 calendars and just make sure. Oh, well, I'm nothing in this one. And that one. Yeah. If there had been a UBI going into lockdown, would that lead to my exist? So universal, what is it? So universal You're basic talking about something I don't know what it is. So you, you, basically, the idea is you get an income for being a citizen. You know, okay. We have to use. We're talking money about communism, and we have to pay tax. No, we're talking about <laughs> putting money into people's pockets, which right. was supposedly the excuse for bailing out the banks. Apart from we didn't put any conditions on that, so they all just did share buybacks instead. Okay. You're, lot, you're talking like whoosh, going straight <laughs> over my head. All the things you're saying. So well, uh, uh, lots of. Uh, the, I do what my accountant tells me to do. The past, the past <laughs> sort of ten years of money printing around the world, that like has largely been to get inflation going, and then right. post COVID, then then we've got inflation going, but the too much inflation, right? And prescriptions are kind of you know putting money into people's pockets. We're right. seeing all the food bank stuff. We're seeing all the the union stuff and yep. the strikes and so on. People need money in their pockets, and like for me, universal basic income is the only. Thing I can think of that's going to do it. So is this saying people who don't even have a job still get basic income? Yeah, everyone. Right, okay. So universal, everyone gets so it's basically like a, a, a stipend even if you're should working, give you a baseline. Yeah. Right. So you can still work, you don't have to give up work, but you can you can work should you want to. Okay. But if basically you were getting your bills paid and you had some money to live, would you have started that Leeds Mike? Well, yeah, it's like living in Thailand. It could only happen for so long <laughs> before I'd get fed up and have to come back, but think I suppose when you think about volunteers who go to work who volunteer is you know um, they they do it because they want to do it and they want to give something back so I suppose if you were on some sort of universal universal money and you knew that was coming in you'd probably find there was more volunteers mm. would there be as much need for them mm. <laughs> to, to be it's yeah quite a difficult question <laughs> Well, yeah, I probably would still have done something. <laughs> I think you would. I think most mm. people are kind of, you know, that that seems to be the answer. Of mm. nobody wants to just sit around forever. Mm. There's loads of <laughs> volunteer organisations. Yeah, um, where you can do loads of different things, mm. and a lot of the a lot of the companies, the editorial that I write, are people who are always looking for volunteers to do things, to mm. go for a walk with people who can't walk on their own, to. Mm. You know, in fact, in fact, the Royal Voluntary Service, um, literally, you choose the kind of volunteering you want to do, and they'll find it for you. Mm. <laughs> you know, they'll they'll find make a fit. Um, so yeah, there's just loads. Mm. <laughs> Be go and work with the homeless hampered, and you know all these other homeless charities and these. Mm. <laughs> mm. Absolutely loads. But maybe there'd be less homeless people if we all on universal money. Well, there should be. There shouldn't mm. be anyone really. They yeah. should have enough to to have that baseline and I think that's the thing some of the people that have answered have you know there have been people who've said I don't think I would have taken the risks that I've taken mm. if I'd have had that that security yeah, that's there that's probably true and I think that's a really valid point yeah but I also think that we don't have to live somewhere where you know, yeah, threat of destitution and death and exposure and like. Is I it a risk that? Is it a risk that 
people who are less, um, I don't want to use the word active, less motivated, um, maybe retreat into themselves and do less because they can still get, not paid, but still survive comfortably. I I think it depends what you see as the motivation killer. Like for me, Mm. the motivation killer is an alarm clock, a nine to five, a Mm. long bus journey. A terribly depressing sick building <laughs> syndrome office, oh. a dead end job, and pop crap pay. Hey? Oh. <laughs> well, that's one of the reasons I moved to Leeds. Is to <laughs> I used to do an hour commute M11, M25, sometimes yeah. longer than an hour, to work in Enfield for eight hours in an office with no window. Mm. I like it had a window, but the window overlooked the warehouse, mm. so no outside window. You know, there for eight hours, sometimes ten, sometimes twelve, and then did the same commute home. Mm. <laughs> I think that's that's say that's one of the reasons we moved. Yeah, and it's not it's not like it's just grim down the mines and everything no. everything's yeah. shiny and golden. Oh. Yeah, it's not. <laughs> <laughs> Fortunately, my commute now is really from my bedroom to my office, which is at home. So, I mean, we've done the work life balance. How is your how is your separation of that? Like, do you see a separation? I'm, I, there I, is I, none. Yeah, it, it's all merged. I into think one. it's arbitrary. So, like, I mean, but I can choose to answer the phone or not answer the phone. If it's after six o'clock in the evening and it's a work call, I'll mm. just I can choose not to answer it. Mm. I can choose like not to respond to my email straight away. I'm are you quite good at them. cutting off? Or all the you... notifications for everything are off. Good. Like yeah. none, I don't. You know, someone sends me a LinkedIn message, I don't get beat. Someone sends me a Twitter, I don't get beat. Mm. You know, it's just because that would drive me absolutely crazy. <laughs> I choose when I want to check my social media. Yeah, I choose. You know, when I want to check my email. Um, yeah. that's then. Yeah, I can't be dictated to by my phone, and I'm not gonna. If someone really, really needs me, they'll call me. Mm. You know, um, yeah, that's that's just. A line that I had to draw quite early mm. because, like, my phone's dinging at me all the time. I'd never get anything done. Mm. It's constant. Oh, 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 oh! There's shiny objects everywhere. <laughs> <laughs> Sometimes you just got to get your head down. <laughs> yeah. Are you? I. I mean, I would. My guess is that you're pretty strong on your time management. Yeah, not bad. <laughs> well, not I mean, bad. is that a skill that you've had to develop, or is that something that you you actively kind of developed, or is that it's just a time management? It is. I mean, for me, it's juggling networking meetings, custom phone calls, one to ones, follow ups from networking, um, things like this, mm. um, meeting customers. Like obviously, I can when I do my deliveries, I normally allow two days because mm. I, I mean. The delivery people go on and do the like the door to door deliveries, but mm. I still have to do. I mean, I still deliver at, like Headingley Heart and Lidget Lane Larder and yeah. you know various community centres welcome in. I still have this big brute, and there's normally about twenty of them for me to do. Mm. So I sort of piece them like an afternoon in Meanwood and an afternoon somewhere else. You know, I've got one <laughs> over in Stanningley. Work my way back across. You know. Stanningley's but, a long way. <laughs> feels like a long way <laughs> but that's like the furthest away yeah that i have to get to um but they're all on the put them on an app which mm. tells me which way to go so i but that again is part of the six week pattern yeah yeah um it's you know those two afternoons plus juggling my daughter whatever the activity she's got to do mm. um, those things you know come first obviously mm. but then yeah making sure it's all done yeah and i'm not exhausted yeah <laughs> <laughs> and then when i am i just sleep <laughs> so this is the cool. point where i throw it over to you um is that... a sales pitch <laughs> well yeah yeah i'm you not can, gonna do that you can do your sales pitch you can do all your socials <laughs> or anything that we haven't talked about that you want to either we we can revisit anything we can mm-hmm. talk about something that we've not touched on or anything work-wise but yeah, well, you. I'm going to write an interview on you. Now you. <laughs> <laughs> well, not an interview. I'm going to write a bit about, obviously, the questions and the kind of people you've been talking to. Uh-huh. So maybe you want to say something. <laughs> uh, well, I do have a plan of... So I have asked my first guest, mm-hmm. who now has their own podcast, cool. to basically do, do the thing and mm. give me my questions back to me. Oh, okay, cool. So they should be... When's that going to come out? So that'll be, it will be the 100th 
and one th- <laughs> <laughs> you could make first. it the hundredth <laughs> <laughs> no no that's cheating because I want it to be kind of outside so you're trying to do a thousand in yeah. ten years yeah so you've fallen behind a little bit massively yeah, yeah. most of it's supposed to be in the last few have you I mean, worked out how many you need to do every month now to no get it done no no don't, and like, is that too scary? <laughs> no, it, it, it's it's not that. It's it's the silence. It's talking to a brick wall kind of thing. So I know there's there's people listening, and there are, mm. but it's like I don't, I haven't, I haven't had anything back of like that was rubbish, or you shouldn't have done that, or yeah, I disagree yeah. with you there, or this was brilliant, or I liked what you did there. Mm. Like a, there's a couple of things, but there's no sort of. I don't know if it, yeah, I don't know what's working, but mm. like my, okay, I've said that I wanted to be in film and stuff, but also my, I, in terms of creating stuff, mm. like being on stage or something, you get immediate feedback. You know what the audience, you know, like you know if the audience is with you or they're bored or whatever. Mm. Like to a degree, you, you kind of, there's a dialogue there yeah. with podcasting. Just pushing it out. You're just <laughs> shouting into the wind yeah, yeah. <laughs> sometimes. So, and maybe, and I find that difficult to improve, you know, like I find it hard to improve my episodes because I don't know the things that are really working or not work. I know what works for me. It's a lot of questions, sir. I know. (laughs) (laughs) What, in the, in the interview? (laughs) But it's, it's, it's designed to be. Thorough. Well, and to be anti-social media, to be anti-soundbite, to be. You know, to be a long-form conversation, which mm. I don't think we get enough of, to be not too chopped up, mm. and to get into the weeds a little bit, and to be able to go everywhere and, yeah. and kind of, but also sit down and listen to a person for a, a good while and, and yeah. like hear what they have to say. Well, I find myself have listened to some of yours, and I'll just put them on the computer while I'm working. Mm. So you sort of get in little bits of highlights of stuff that people say. And it's mm. all very interesting. When, yeah, because, and even ones it's where. Nice. It's like people are nosy, do you know what I mean? That, With that's the social media. This is the, the whole thinking <laughs> of like, how many people do you listen to on the bus where you're like, oh, how many really people have seen your post? And, the, you know, <laughs> there's that insight. But for you, that's probably more important because you can get a feel for how many people are listening. Yeah. Um, I mean, and they're just being nosy because yeah. the general public are nosy. <laughs> <laughs> they don't like engage back. I don't know if they're scared of us <laughs> or what, but you know, it's well, yeah, be bothered. I mean, I very rarely get messages from people saying, "Oh, I love the magazine," but when I do, it's really nice. Yeah. <laughs> I got a, a WhatsApp message the other day. Someone, I saw you in Min- Meanwood. I meant to say hello, but you looked like you were in a hurry. <laughs> I was like, I probably was. Thank you. <laughs> yeah, you know, and, uh, I do get the odd like nice message on Instagram. Love your magazine. It well, just sort of keeps you going. <laughs> no, it does. I mean, it's like in offices. I mean, um, you know, it, it, you need you need acknowledgement. Yeah, you need I'll a give thank you. you. Yeah. Well, yeah, you need that in offices. And like sometimes they do it too much and they give you these like, you know, forced thank yous yeah. all the time. And it's like, you know, make it genuine. Make it in the moment. Sort yeah. of spontaneous. Say it when you mean it. What else was I going to say? Well, sometimes, I mean, we've both got a coffee.com. Mm. It's like, okay, well, you can buy me a coffee. You know? <laughs> <laughs> Once in a while. <laughs> I think, I don't think that's, I don't think it's going to work in Yorkshire. I, I was no, trying to think of a diplomatic right. way to put that, but it's just like, at least people aren't going to be paying anything online. <laughs> yeah. Well, people get my content for free, so why would they? Oh, yeah. It makes sense, So mm. It is, I. I need to, like, f- f- so I want it to be something, so the, 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 the record, these interviews are mm. one thing to a degree, and then there's the podcast, which is another thing. So I want this to be kind of a repository of knowledge. It, like, yeah. it is a history project. It is, like, recording. Mm. If, if we make it through this, like, these are, these are the kind of things that we were doing. Have you seen, um, my daughter was just in a show at Chapel FM called Save Our Stories. I've seen the yeah. stuff of it. I haven't So they the were show. playing, as part of the show, they were playing audio from different people that they'd interviewed in the community. Mm. Which was quite cute. <laughs> well, um, so Tony, yep. one of the guys there, 
um, he, so when I did my um, recording for mm. Love the Words that yeah. I top of the and Peter introduced me to, to Tony, mm-hmm. and I found out that he was archivist for Studs Terkel, who's the guy who wrote the book that this idea comes from. Ah, okay. So he wrote, he, so I'm like literally, you know, <laughs> two handshakes from Studs Terkel, who's not with us anymore. Yeah. But, you know, like one of the preeminent world oral history yeah. people. So that was kind of, oh, wow, that's awesome. Leeds is just endlessly fascinating, honestly. <laughs> like, He's I, talking about Tony Macaluso and yeah, Leeds Bafford. Yeah, <laughs> I, like, there is, everything is in this city, like, honestly. Like, yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, you know, from Louis Le Prince and mm. inventing film, the first railway, the Middleton Railway, mm. we've got... The Kaiser uh, Chiefs. Yeah. <laughs> John Smeaton. <laughs> oh, I never actually realised they mentioned John Smeaton in I Predict a Riot. <laughs> Until I went to the Army Museum. I was like, what's that? Oh, yeah, it is in that song. <laughs> so, yeah. It's loads. Yeah. It's because Leeds is the best city in the world. Thank you again to Debbie for being my guest. Thanks again to all my guests. And thanks to you, Leeds, for being my subject. And thank you, of course, to you, dear listener. Please support the show and help me to help it find its audience. There is one in Leeds for this. I need working hours to start taking off and scaling now. And to do that, I'm going to need at minimum some feedback. And also, I need calling out on where I'm pushing things too far. I feel like I've done all the experiments I can at the moment to elicit the precious engagement with little to no success. But I don't want engagement for the algorithm. I want it because I'm a person a social creature that needs feedback. Am I being a good podcaster or a bad podcaster? What are your turn-ons and turn-offs on the show? What would make you pay something for it? Do you want merch? Do you want merch for coming on the show? Should everyone get a tote bag or some shit? Personally, I need my head patting and a biscuit, so please do something, anything, like the Facebook page, share a post, just so I don't feel like I'm performing to a room full of mannequins. You have opinions. I need them. I need your precious opinions. Give them to me. You can follow the show on Twitter at WorkingHours3 and on Instagram at WorkingHoursPodLead. Use the hashtag WorkingHoursPodLeads to stay up to date on when new episodes are being released. DM me with your questions, or most importantly, to get in touch if you'd like to be my guest on this show. Not destroying your brain with social media? Then send me an email to WorkingHoursPod at Western-Studios.com. Or if you'd like to be anonymous, email me at WesternStudios at ProtonMail.com. If you enjoyed this episode, please remember to share it with your networks. Please, please do chuck in anything you can to help working hours grow. Go to Kofi, that's ko-fi.com forward slash working hours and join me there for three pound a month. And or you can make any one off donation of whatever amount through that site. Or you can go to patreon.com forward slash working hours pod to support working hours from as little as a pound a month. There's also an Outlander tier for non loiners at £5 a month and a £12 a month big time tier for anyone who feels flash. I'm not really offering anything much on the Patreon yet, as I'm already doing more than enough unpaid labour on this project. If and when things pick up, then we'll see. The goal is to make the podcast and my commitment to it both possible and sustainable. If you are happy to make a regular contribution, but you're priced out by a pound a month, you can go to librapay.com, that's L-I-B-E-R-A-P-A-Y, dot com, forward slash Western Studios, forward slash donate, and donate from as low as a penny a week, all the way up to £89 a week. And people say I'm pessimistic. Again, you can also make one-off donations through LibraPay, which you can do either publicly or anonymously. Remember to like, share, follow and subscribe to Working Hours. Work for peace and plan with kindness. Okay, that's me. Cheers, ears. Take care out there and be kind to each other, Leeds.
Working Hours is produced, recorded, edited and published by Simon Treen for Western Studios Leeds Limited. The music was The Bees from Chopin's Etudes, which is in the public domain and was taken from museopen.org. Follow Western Studios Leeds on Facebook at facebook.com forward slash western underscore studios underscore leads and on LinkedIn, linkedin.com forward slash company forward slash western hyphen studios. Western Studios Leads will help you realize your podcast for only £25 for an hour of podcast work. Need podcast production, recording, editing, or any podcast admin doing? Need it all doing? Do you want or need a podcast host or co-host for your podcast project? Then get in touch with Western Studios Leads Limited. Email makemypodcast at western-studios.com to get your podcast made. Western Studios Leeds Limited is available to third sector organizations, small to medium sized businesses, and individuals to make podcasts or other digital audio content. Do you want to make some fundraising case studies? Do you want to show off your expertise in your field? Do you want some help creating your show and format? or just some support learning to podcast and get going. Whatever your podcast question or need, get in touch with Western Studios Leads. Go to western-studios.com and use the contact page to send a message about either working hours or about your own podcast project.